Good Wednesday morning. It's March 10th, 2021. I'm Guy McPherson of Nature Bats Last, which you can find at guymcpherson.com. In this science update, I'm going to talk about a Northern California kelp forest and how it has been greatly reduced in terms of biological diversity. The primary paper that I'm relying upon is in the journal Communications Biology, and it's introduced by a paper at phys.org. If you go to guymcpherson.com, you'll, you'll be able to read both of those papers, as well as see this embedded video. The phys.org paper is titled, The Collapse of Northern California Kelp Forests Will Be Hard to Reverse. When I read something like that, I automatically suspect understatement underway and probably what this means is that the collapse of northern california kelp forests will be impossible to reverse not hard to reverse a few lines from the paper at phys.org the area covered by kelp forests off the coast of northern california has dropped by more than 95 percent which is huge Species-rich kelp forests have been replaced by urchin barrens, where purple sea urchins cover a seafloor devoid of kelp and other algae. Paper published in Communications Biology indicates that the kelp forests north of San Francisco were, were resilient to extreme warming events in the past, surviving strong marine heat waves and El Nino events. But the loss of a key urchin predator, the sunflower sea star, due to sea star wasting disease, left the kelp forests of Northern California without any predators of sea urchins, which are voracious grazers of kelp. So again, as I've been pointing out for many years, this is an example of the intricate nature of the relationships between organisms within a site and how changing slightly the environment can completely alter the species composition of an area. The sea star wasting disease, we know that as mad cow disease, when it occurs in humans, that's the common name. The more scientific version of that name is bovine spongiform encephalopoly. Encephalopathy. <laughs> my Monopoly game got a little ahead of my tongue there. Quoting the senior author of the paper, whose name is Meredith McPherson, the paper goes on, Sea otters haven't been seen on the North Coast since the 1800s. From what we observed in the satellite data from the last 35 years, the kelp had been doing well without sea otters as long as we still had sunflower stars. Once they were gone, there were no urchin predators left in the system. So historically and prehistorically, the otters were the primary predators of the urchins and they've been gone for a couple of hundred years, but this other tiny organism served as a predator. Even if temperature and nutrient conditions are good for kelp growth, new kelp plants will have a hard time getting established in the midst of these urchin barrens. So these barrens are devoid of almost all life, including the important species in question here. Quoting the final of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven authors of this paper. This year, we are finally seeing ocean temperatures starting to cool off, so we're hoping that it reverses naturally and the kelp is able to take off again. There's really not much we can do except keep monitoring it. Of course, the long-term solution is to reduce our carbon emissions so we don't have these extreme events pointing out yet another person who is unaware of the aerosol masking effect because reducing industrial activity, reducing emissions goes hand in hand with reducing aerosol masking. So I don't think that's such a great idea. And hope isn't such a swift idea either, as I pointed out in the peer-reviewed literature. Turning to the paper in communications biology, 
lead author Meredith McPherson and six other author, authors to follow, and I'm reading from the abstract here, we show strong evidence that Northern California kelp forests, while temporarily dynamic, were historically resilient to fluctuating environmental conditions, even in the absence of key top predators, but that a series of coupled environmental and biological shifts between 2014 and 2016 resulted in the formation of a persistent, altered ecosystem state with low primary productivity. And those are the urchin barrens that are discussed in the phys.org paper. Their recommendations include one, monitoring the status of key ecosystem attributes, because that's what all scientists want to continue doing is monitoring, especially by somebody else. Two, developing management responses to threshold levels of these attributes, counting on somebody else to do something for a condition which is already behind us, threshold levels of these attributes. We've already entered a new state from an environmental and biological and ecological perspective. And finally, creating quantitative restoration suitability indices for informing kelp restoration efforts. Let's keep track. And that's something that science has always been particularly good at is pointing out that other people can be monitoring something or in a really good case, the scientist gets to monitor something because that means money flowing into the system and keeping them therefore in a job. Finally, from the paper itself in communications biology, well into the introductory section, prior to this regime shift, the forested ecosystem likely persisted because the the cool, nutrient-rich waters that fueled kelp production and food availability to urchins was balanced by top-down urchin predation by the sunflower star. So that seems to me to be the take-home message of this paper is you get rid of one relatively small organism that almost nobody has paid attention to over time, and it has profound impacts for the structure of the system from then on. We show that this persistent multi-year event has not been seen in the region for the observable past. This, near the end of the paper, in the discussion section, pointing out that this is a brand new phenomenon, that the shift from one ecosystem type to another has occurred very quickly, and that it's almost certainly due to the lack of a single small organism, thus indicating, again, the intricate nature of these relationships and how changing just a, just one minor thing is like pulling this, the, this thread from a sweater. At some point you pull enough of those threads. In fact, it might be the first thread you pull and the sleeve falls off. Well, we're seeing it all over the world now. The sleeves are falling off the ecosystems rapidly. Thank you for paying attention and please stay tuned for another one of these science updates in about a week.